and then a 3 plus a 2i. Okay, again, I want to multiply by the conjugate. All right, because I want to get this to a simplified answer. So I'm going to choose the opposite sign. The reason I'm choosing an opposite sign is because I'm trying to force the difference of two squares there on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply by a 3 minus 2i, 3 minus 2i. So there's my conjugate. I do that real simply so that I can create the bottom and just foil the first one, foil the second one with the minus sign. Now, on the top, I have a binomial over here. I have a binomial right here. I have to foil out of that top. Okay, so we're going to do it, and I'm going to show all the steps. So first term, 5 times 3 is 15. If I do outside term, I have a minus 10i. If I do inside term, I'll have a plus 12i. And if I do last term, I'll have a plus 8i squared. All right, not, add, not adding them. I just pull, literally foil that so I see all the terms. All right, on the bottom, obviously don't let me screw up here. All right, on the bottom, 3 squared, and then minus the second term, which is a 2i, inside the set of parentheses and square it. Okay, so you're squaring both. In the top, I've got some like terms. So these two are like, and I know this means negative 1. Right, so I can simplify to a 15, and then plus a 2i. 8 times that negative 1 right there is going to be a minus 8. Let's go ahead and square each one of these. Plus 8, what? Yep, there's my mistake. I was going, wait, this isn't working out. Thank you very much for catching that. expect you guys to be awake up here. There we go. There we go. Thank you very much. Okay, now, 3 squared is going to be a 9. This right here, what? 4. And the negative turns this to a plus, so plus 4. Totally coincidental that we got 13 in the bottom on this one, too. They won't always be 13. All right, go ahead and keep the top in that A plus BI form. So when I add 15 and 8, put the 23 first. And then 13 on the bottom. And we have somebody knocking at the door. Go ahead and let them in. They're probably just bringing us a ticket. All right. If you want to go ahead and break that up into your A plus BI form, nothing crosses out. So 23 over 13. And yeah, just give it to whoever needs it. 2 over 13. And then I always pull the I out there in front. Okay, so minus our little two there, everything good? Okay, well, that's since I still got room on this piece of paper. I want to show a major difference on two ways of uh, squaring something that people screw up on a lot. Okay, so let's just say I'm trying to simplify. And let's say I've got a 4i in a set of parentheses with a 2. And I'm trying to compare that with a 4i squared. All right, those two are not the same thing. One has a set of parentheses, one doesn't. That set of parentheses basically is saying that's my entire base and that's what's getting squared. And this one over here, the only thing that's getting squared is the i. That 4 is left alone. Okay, so if you need to see this, you could write, I mean, you could write 4i times 4i um, if you need to see that, because it's your base being squared. 4 times 4 is 16, and then i times i is i squared. So really, I've got a 16i squared, and at that point, there's no parentheses. And then i squared is a negative 1, so then the overall answer is negative 16. Okay, that makes sense? I take the base. If you need to write it twice, write it twice, and then multiply 4 times 4 is 16. i times i is i squared. That i squared is a negative, so it's a negative 16. Now, over here, the only thing that's being squared is the i. The only thing being squared is the i. So this one is really 4 times a negative 1, right? Because i squared is negative 1. And 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So they don't even come close to being the same answer. Okay, it's because where is the base? What's being squared? 
So that's something that's important. Now, in this particular section, they're gonna throw, they do a little bit of introduction with your eyes just because from algebra two, they're hoping you remember this. All right, and then where do we encompass these the most? In radicals, right? So we've already done a chapter where we reviewed our radicals. So they're gonna do some radical problems. 